What's up Monster Hobbies model car mechanics? Today we're going to be looking at a super spider. Spiders? Oh no! Do we have an infestation in the basement? No, 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 Danny, not that kind of spider. Today I'm talking about the 1978 Chevrolet Monza Super Spider model kit by Ravel. Oh good! I was about to get a newspaper. Don't worry, Danny. You're safe. You can still stick with us till the end of the video where I can show you where to buy some really cool model car kits. Okay then, let's get unboxing. Once again, we head all the way back to our Chevy showroom for 1978 where we see the amazing Chevy Monza Super Spider. The Ravel Chevy Monza Super Spider is a 125th scale model kit molded in color. Our Super Spider includes custom rear body panel, custom racing interior, optional rear spoiler, Motorola CB radio, and a fire extinguisher. The model also includes a pop-in one-piece windshield, Chevy 454 cubic inch V8 engine with chrome custom parts, optional window louvers for rear quarter windows and backlight, IMSA style Monza body with quarter panel fairing and front air dam, custom racing mirrors, opening hood with scoop, a roll bar, and BF Goodrich Radial TAA50 tires with appliance turbo VEC wheels and optional centerline wheels. Now we'll open the lid on our Chevy Monza Super Spider and then after Danny the dog can show you the instruction sheet. So here we have the vintage Ravel instructions and I got this from my friend Andrew McMahon way back on May 25th 1994. Here we have the decal sheet and then we've got the nice body in here. We also have our tires and these are the two-piece tires again. There is the parts tree with our interior and undercarriage. Then we've got our hood in here. We also have the front of the car. There's our one-piece windshield tucked in nicely. We also have our chrome and of course more black plastic parts trees. Very nice. A full perimeter frame in here. That's also pretty awesome. So now I'll just clear this out of the way and let Danny read you in those instructions. Now once again Ravel gives you a full page instruction sheet. This is very typical of the 70s. Here we've got all our little icons showing us what to do and what we'll need in this kit. And then we get into our parts breakdown. So step one, we've got a two-piece engine block with transmission molded in place. And that gets glued together and then hooked up to our oil pan down below. Step two shows our manifold dropping in place with the air cleaner. This again is like those Johan kits with our cylinder heads, our intake manifold, carburetor and distributor all molded as one piece, dropping onto an engine block. Step 3 is really simple again. You got your fan belts and pulleys gluing onto the front timing cover and then our clutch style aluminum fan glues into this hole right here. Step 4 shows our chrome valve cover is being glued in place. Remember to scrape the chrome off the bottom on that contact surface first. Panel 5 shows our exhaust manifolds being glued in place and these things are really awesome looking. Keep in mind that this is a gigantic 454 Chevy V8. Panel 6 shows our differential and rear axle being glued into place. It's basically just a top cover on here. You got your rear leaf springs molded in in place as well as the brake backing plates. Step 7 shows our full frame right here and then we've got our rear axle being glued in place with some shock absorbers. Step 8 shows posable wheels here with this nice king pin as well as our front disc brake all gluing into place. Your wheels are going to fit on that pin so make sure they're really clean inside. Here in panel 9 we have our suspension in the front going together. You got your upper A arms molded onto the frame and then a spring in the back and then your wheel assembly goes in there and then the lower A arms are all glued in place. And if you wanted to make posable steering on this you can easily set up a tie rod just by drilling in a little hole in here, bending a wire around and stuff like that. Panel 10 shows our wheels and tires being glued together. There you've got the option of your different wheels and then there's your two-piece tire. There is a backing plate and of course the back of the wheel. Make sure you don't get any glue on the backing plate otherwise your wheels won't rotate. And you got to make four of these. Panel 11 shows our wheels being glued onto our axles. Then we drop in our awesome Chevy 454 big block and we hook it up to our rear drive shaft here which adds it to the differential. And notice that the drive shaft goes through the loop here on the frame. 
Our next step is to drop in our floor pan onto our frame. Then you turn the whole assembly upside down and glue on your exhaust pipes. Next up we can focus our attention on the interior panel and here you can see you got a choice of which type of wheel you want to drop into the spare tire. Here's our three piece roll bar going in and it's just basically the bar itself and two supports in the back. Panel 17 shows the assembly being dropped into place in the interior bucket. Our bucket seats are molded in two halves. You've got the outer where you're going to be sitting down and the back inner part of the bucket. You'd make these seats up two times. Then just put a bit of glue underneath your seats and drop them right into place. Don't forget your gear stick lever. And then you put in your dashboard and glue the steering wheel on it. Then drop the entire interior bucket right onto the chassis. Our windshield, side windows and rear glass all pop into place just like it said on the top of the box. Panel 24 shows our body being dropped onto the chassis and interior and you're going to have to spread the sides out in order to make it all click into place. Next up you want to glue the radiator support and radiator straight into the front of the car. Panel 26 shows our front end getting the headlight treatment, which then gets put into the front of the body by just pushing it into place and gluing it on. Panel 28 shows our hood being put into place. You do not want to glue this, but you want to pinch in the sides here and click it in. Panel 29 shows our mirror getting glass put in it. Panel 30 shows our Super Spider decal being put in place on the window, as well as our mirror being glued in place and this cool side exhaust dump. So let's glue our other mirror together. There's the outer housing and mount, and our glass being glued into place. Panel 32 shows our mirror and the other exhaust dump being glued on, and showing the rear three-quarter of our body. Next we add in our custom taillight assembly right into the back here. And here's the optional rear louvers. I would put these in because they look really cool on the box art. And here we have the optional rear spoiler being glued in place. Again, I would put this on this car because without the louvers and the spoiler, it would just look kind of odd, I think. Here we have our decal sheet. And as you can see, we've got all our different decals being put onto the car. I'm going to use them because I think they'd look really cool. So now, Trevor, let's see those plastic parts. Here's our body for our Chevy Monza Super Spider, and what I see here are some really cool fender fairings, much like the IMSA cars of the day. You got a nice door handle in there, as well as these side vents. Taking a look at the top, there's your trunk lid. Again, very cool looking. Under hood details include the battery and the windshield bottle, as well as our brake booster in there cool work. This should go together quite nicely. A couple of mold marks up under the hood that you'll have to take care of, or pardon me, on the roof. But overall, very nicely done and a very excellent body for the vintage of this kit. Our first parts tree includes a lot of the car body panels, as well as the two-piece engine blocks. So here you can see our wheels, and you've got your radiator with the support, the rear bumper, the hood, all those cool side window louvers, the front end, and our Chevy 454 cubic inch motor. Now I'll bring up this part tree into the camera, but the problem we got here is of course a couple of the pieces have come off. So again, look at how nice the detail is on that rear panel. There's our cool looking wheels and our louvers. A lot of great detail on that radiator. Not really too bad on the mold marks on this. Overall, I would give this a really good score. Let's just take a look at that hood here. Again, there's the front louvers, and underneath there's no mat, but there are a couple of sink marks that you'll have to correct out of there. And then here we've got our front end. Again, very nicely detailed, very nicely done. The Monza emblem is sitting up in the center. There's our engine as well. Great work on the detailing. It's even got the frost plugs in the side. So overall, I would give this parts tree quite a high mark. Next up, we have our full perimeter frame. And again, very nicely done. Few mold marks on the tops that you'll have to file down. There's our front suspension and all the little components in here, as well as our rear spoiler. Two mold marks in the back there. There's our roll cage, our drive shaft, the engine, shock absorbers, 
as well as belts and pulleys. There's our differential as well, and the little rally race steering wheel. So when I said engine, really what I mean is the top with our cylinder heads and our intake manifold as well as carburetor and distributor all molded as one piece. Again, nicely done. Steering wheel has little tiny holes in there. Very good. Very well done by Ravel. Quite a bit of flash. Well, not really flash, but uh, you'd want to clean this up with your hobby blade. Again, excellent work. This parts tree includes our interior bucket with the spare tire molded in place in the back. It's also got a center parking brake in here. Very nicely done. There's our chassis floor pan, as well as our dashboard, our mirrors, and our two-piece bucket seats. So again, let's take this up into the camera and see the nice detail. Really great carpet molded in place. There are no mold marks under here, so that's good. There's our dashboard as well. Nicely done. And turning it over, you can see where the mold marks are. They're all underneath where they should be. So that's excellent work by Ravel. They're also inside the seats, so gluing this together, you're not going to see any mold marks. So I'll give this one a top mark. Here we have our chrome parts tree, and there's a lot on here. There's also quite a bit of flash around, but that's okay. Here we have our five little rally wheels. One of these is going into that spare tire cage. This one, I do believe, is either the air cleaner or the other wheel that will drop in. Although I do think it's the air cleaner. I'll just take a look in a minute. There's our wheel backs, and they are chrome. We've also got our aluminum chrome-plated fan. Again, very nice-looking parts. So let's just turn this up. Oh, it is the air cleaner with the paper filament underneath. So somewhere in the box that I missed is the plug for our spare tire to go into. But at any rate, there's all that bits and pieces. So look at that nice detail on the fan. You've got all the little bolts and screws, the rivets I should say. That's what it really is. There's our front headlamps. Again, a little bit of flash around there that you'll have to get out of. And there's the antenna for our CB radio, which was another thing I didn't really see on that kit. Interestingly enough, there's our exhaust manifolds, but it looks like one of the tubes broke off somewhere. So I might have to fabricate that but overall, again, very nice work by Ravel. The windows on this model kit are made out of smoked glass, and there's not much to really say about them. You do get the back one in the side, as well as the front. It's all molded as one piece, so of course you got the bridge in between, and you'll want to get rid of the marks on here. There should also be some headlights somewhere. Hopefully they didn't get lost on me. Finally, we've got our BF Goodrich radial tires. These, again, are really nicely done, but they are the two-piece tire. So you're going to have to match up which is the front and back, or the inner and outer, I should say. But once they're glued together, they will be about that thick. So again, really nicely done. Uh, yeah, Crazy Glue should be able to glue them together, although I'm not too sure. Or you could always swap these out for complete tires from your parts box. Last but not least, we have our decal sheet. And as you can see, these are very simplistic looking decals, but they do have this really neat neon pink in here. That's really bright, actually. So you've got a Monza, this is your license plate, there's your side stripes and the spiders, as well as the window sticker. And that completes our look at our 1978 Chevy Monza Super Spider model kit by Ravel. And if you want to know where to find some great model kits for sale right now, why not check out our Monster Hobbies website by clicking on this link up above. Well, Danny, I sure hope you enjoyed making this video with me. Oh boy, I sure did. And we'll see you all on the next video.